it's Monday evening. Welcome everyone. Yes, you will be surprised. I'm in Studio One. Why I'm in Studio One? Why have I got Christmas? What's going on? Ask the question. Any guesses what might be going on? So thank you for tuning me. Tuning me. <laughs> you can tell I just dashed in from cricket. Joining me and tuning in. Tuning me is joining and tuning in at the same time. Giddy kipper alert. It's going to be a fantastic evening, everyone. But yes, cricket, as the coach likes to have a lovely group huddle after the match, I'm sat there like, oh, come on, come on. It's windy, trying to get out. But anyway, welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Tony Darrick, and this is the How to Craft Network Studio. This is Studio One. I bet you're all expecting Studio Three, but hey ho. So the only um, comments I can see are YouTube. So if you are on Facebook, you might want to jump on YouTube to have a conversation with me. But please don't worry about it. I always go back and check all of the comments so nobody... I don't miss any comments at all and I've got my lovely design team on and Karen's on as well and they always help me out with um, comments and things like that so hopefully we never miss anybody's comments. Now I am alone this evening in studio, I have reasons and I'll just talk with you all, we'll have some question and answers whilst we're going through this evening session as well so um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lovely evening. Now I've got a little bit of a technique based studio this evening now normally when we do studio three i do a new product release or something like that but i think it's really important that we listen to you as customers as well and i did see a lot of comments on social media they bought our lovely die cutting machine and they were a bit fearful of which plates go with what so i thought you know what we'll do a show where i can show you the plate system on our new die cutting machine well it's not new it's two years old but we've just had stock land for it so I'm going to show you that and guess what, I'm going to show you how to use some embossing folder techniques and I'm going to show you how to get um, the embossing with no lines in your cards as well. So how does that sound? I hope it all sounds wonderful for you all. So if you have some embossing folders, whether they be mine or somebody else's, dig them out. We'll have some fun with those. And I'm going to show you a little bit of um, a cool technique with your embossing folders too. So how is everyone? Let's do a shout out. If you can, make sure you all share because it's sharing the love of craft. It helps me also share my brand, but also there may be somebody sat at home this evening on their own with no crafty mojo. And we might just pop up and inspire them in one way or another. So let's do a little bit of a shout out. If you are brand new to the channel, please let me know. If you are a newbie. I like to know where you're all from. So we have our run up to our HSN shows. Well, crikey, it's all coming at once, isn't it? So when I do my wonderful HSN shows, which are over in America, um, I get a ton of new subscribers, which is wonderful. And um, you all come and say hello. Some of you have stuck around since our last HSN shows, which is brilliant as well. So we get a ton of USA followers who come and get inspiration also. So stay connected, make friends across the pond. Let's get together, be creative together, because that is what it's all about. Now, if you do ask a question, I just saw a question, just tip off the screen there. Just copy and paste it back in and hopefully I'll catch it on the second one. So let's do a bit of a shout out. We've got Michaela, Bernadette, Nola, Shirley, Michelle. Shirley, uh, I need to speak to you about your advent calendar, sweetheart. Erlene, Rosie, Adele, Jen G, Jen G, Leslie, Irene, Jan Robbins. Uh, I saw something about the hottest something. My gosh, it's moving very, very fast. Michaela and Emma. Barbister, Wendy Taylor, Sue Donnell, Ellen Gordon, Karen, hi sweetheart, Rosie Beaumont, Sandra Millard, whew, hang on, Martha Chapman, and W, lovely to have your company, happy Monday, whoop whoop, hi everyone from the USA, whoop whoop, hi Martha, hi Nola, right, I'm just tipping over, there's a little camera. Now, uh, we're in Studio One simply because I'm here all night. I have a uh, product preview for USA at 1 a.m. in the morning, so I've got a long day ahead. Um, so that's why we're actually in Studio One, because we've got our little picnic and we're ready to um, do our shows later this evening. Secondly, you might be wondering why we've got Christmas up. Well, we had our wonderful um, catalogue event for our USA stores where uh, they got to view our catalogue and a lot of it was Christmas as you can appreciate for the up and coming stores. So um, we did our 
um, catalogue preview of all of our brand new lines and I decided to put Christmas on. So, But I've left it up because I felt like, do you know what? Christmas is Christmas. It's been Christmas in this studio for about two months, actually. Um, so I'm just leaving it up because I think it looks quite cute. And I am not taking away the presents, even though they're boxes of fresh air. They're staying there. So let's have a look. Any questions, please pop Q, Q, Q. Right, we have Brianna. It's lovely here in e evening here in Lyingbrough. Sun is shining still. I hope I've said that one correctly. And Karen says, hi to Tim and hi to Tim and happy birthday to the gorgeous Tom. Yeah, so quick story for you all. So Tom is nine today. Amazing. Although we've worked all day. He's getting a treat. We're going to go ape at some point. But I did get him a little present because just like a holding present as you do. And I gave him it this morning and he was so underwhelmed. <laughs> I like... Go Ape is quite expensive. He's going to take two of his friends. Um, and he's got, he got some trainers about three or four weeks ago, which he got early because he's had a growth spurt. His feet are huge. So I said they were part of his birthday gift. Uh, so today when I gave him his little gift, he was so underwhelmed. So thank you for all of the lovely cards and gift vouchers and money that he got from all of our lovely family and crafters as well because he was so underwhelmed with mum's gift, electric toothbrush. Well, you know... Dentist said he needed an electric toothbrush. What did I do? I bought him an electric toothbrush. And I bought him the toothpaste as well that takes him to 9 to 12 rather than 6 to 8. Well, he just went, thanks, Mum. Like, that was really expensive. Get it out. It's like, cheers. <laughs> like, maybe not an electric toothbrush next year, hey? So, hi, Pam Simpson. Lovely to have your company, darling. I hope you're well. Adele. Monkey Fossil, go ape his fag. Yeah, absolutely. I'll love to see his dad and him hanging from ropes while I sit there with a nice sandwich, <laughs> Kit Kat, pot pie, you know. It is what it is. Right, let's crack on because I can only, only be on an hour because I've just got a ton of stuff to do, as you can appreciate. I've been doing my HSM boards all day as well and I fly out on Saturday. And before that, I have actually got a one-day special on TV on Thursday, Thursday, Friday. And fly to HSM. Oh, what day is it? Just remind me. It's a good job I'm on. It's a good job I'm organised. That's all I'm saying. So let's do an out of the box experience for our lovely uh, people who bought this, and then I'm going to talk you through the plate system. So whether you're die cutting, embossing, I think it'll be really helpful and useful. And if you were sitting on the fence, maybe, and you're thinking, do you know what, I could do with a new machine. Um, what's what what's special about it well maybe some of the features that i've talked you through are going to enable you to make that decision now if you have a good die cutting machine at home you're not going to need another one but maybe you have one that is problematic doesn't do what it's supposed to do um so i'm going to go through it it is a workhorse okay so let me do a out of box experience now you're probably thinking why have you got a ton Right, so I've got mine here on the back, which I'm going to use for my demos. Hello from Missouri in the USA, Wild Turkey Bluff. <laughs> what a name. That is a cool name. Hello from Missouri. Lovely to have your company. When are the inks coming? I get that question every day. Click the notify me button. You know, as much as I do, as soon as they arrive, as soon as I get the notification, you will get the notification too. Um... Hello to all of our lovely friends in the UK. Oh, thank you so much. And across the pond. Whoop, whoop. Karen says she bought her son an injection to stop hay fever for the summer. He said it was the best present ever. Hi, Julie. So if you can share. Hello from Chicago, Carol. Welcome to the channel, sweetheart. What's the weather like? So Sarah says she needs this machine. She's packed enough of them. <laughs> She helps me if you didn't gather. So let's get into it really, really quickly, guys. Oh, question, question. Will you be getting more gnomes? Yes. The answer to that one is that one. Click the notify me, Julie. Um, what were I going to say? So the reason why I want you to share, if you can, and the reason why I would like you to like my video, if you enjoy the video, is because I'm going to give a machine away. Now, the way that you can win this machine is by popping a comment underneath this video when I go off air. So did you like the show? Do you like the machine? What's your best technique with embossing folders? Do you love our embossing folders? Whatever, whatever it may be, pop a comment underneath this video when I've gone off air. And in a few days, I'll pick a winner for this machine. As I did pick winners for the embossing folders. So hopefully you all got those too. 
Right, so I've got a question, question, only. When is the die cut machine on CNC? I would love one and need a die cut machine. So I'm not taking it back to TV, Julie. I have some on my own website. So if you have your points, it'll be the similar price. It's not going back to TV. What's left is what I've kept back for myself, uh, for the time being, anyway. Hot in San Diego. Woo, hot. Right, let's crack on. So this is your six inch machine, guys. Super, super lovely. Should have really, should have really got it out, shouldn't I, before? So when you get it out, obviously you get your box. You get your lovely instructional guide. Now, the, it is a guide. Always remember, it is a guide. You might have to play around with the plate system for different types of dies and uh, embossing folders because some embossing folders are super thin, some are super chunky. Some are resilient, some are not. So you need to go through your plate system and play around. Don't ever force a machine. Okay, so you have the sort of guide on there and what you should be getting in the kit as well. So you get your lovely guide. Then on the back here, you get your lovely plate. Now you do get five, let me show you on this one. This is the one that I give away. So if you get open plates, it's because I've been faffing, fiddling, faffing. So you get your plate system. So you get your bulky white one, okay? Then you get your B plate, which is the base plate, okay, for your cutting. I'll talk you through it though. You do get an assisted shim, maybe for a little bit of embossing. I've never had to use mine, but it is there if you need it. And then you get um, two C plates, okay, two. And I'll tell you why in a second, okay? And it was important that you had two C plates, and I'll tell you why in a second. So there's your plates, they're what you get in a set, and then you obviously get your wonderful machine. Like so, here we go, and then in the side you get your um, handle and in there is a little screw, super easy. All you do is screw the handle in, and I'll show you on mine. The great thing about this machine is that if you try and pop some pressure through, it won't jam. It'll just unloosen the little cog here, so you just have to tighten it back up. That's the beauty of it. It's an absolute workhorse, I can't tell you. So let's just set this aside for now. So I will be giving this away to anybody who comments underneath this video after we've gone off air. And I'll leave it running for a few days because I appreciate like our USA followers, we always get a ton of views the day after and the day after it plays catch up with itself. So that's your system. So let me just bring mine in here. Super, as you can see. So mine's two years old. And the thing that I love about my machine the most is check out these plates. Look how straight they are. Now, you all know that, um, ooh, polystyrene, I know, Amanda, ooh. Um, you all know that um, I started a A4 die cutting machine, which was this, whoops a daisy, which was this one. You all remember? Now, the machine, incredible. Cut like a dream. What happened though? The plates went like that. I was like, nope, we need to change the plates. The plates are just not good enough. So when I said to you, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, all that time I've been trying to recreate the plates so they stay like that forever. And you know what? It's proven quite impossible, but I'm not launching the machine until I find some plates that don't bend because it's the bane of my life. So this is your six inch machine. I'll just, you will not, two years old this machine. Absolutely amazing. No banana plates, Donna. <laughs> two years old. Yep, my logo's come off, but do you know what? It's an absolute workhorse. So for your die cutting, I use my big thick B plate on the base and a C plate on top, boom, done, okay? Now, these have never warped, but we do have extra plates. If you crack one, drop one, lose one, extra plates, Bs and Cs are available on the website, and that was really important to me. Also, because I felt like when you sometimes buy machines after a year or two, you can't get the plates. Now, if you do have a snap machine, these plates go through your snap as well. They're perfect for the snap. So if you need replacement plates for the snap, 
uh, our plates fit the snap as well because I've got a snap machine too. So to cut, you need your B and your C. Super, super easy, okay? Now, I think the tricky part for everyone was the embossing. Now, for my embossing, I use the thick one and the white. That is it. And people said, but I'm doing that, Tony, and it's not going through. I think for your first or second run of our embossing folders, it's a little bit tricky. The machine is just getting used to it. But after it's done it a few times, it goes through like absolute butter, okay? So that's for my embossing folders, though, guys. Just remember that. Uh, you might have to change it for other people's embossing folders. So the thick one, your B one, and your white one are embossing folders. And I'm going to do some embossing folder techniques as well. Now, I was asked, you all commented on a lovely card on one of our feeds in relation to not getting the lines in your embossing folders. I'm going to show you this evening as well with our wonderful machine. Super, super easy. What I do want to show you very quickly is, can you see mine here, this handle here? It unscrews, right? So what happens, you can just see it there from the side. What happens is once you've done a ton of embossing, it starts to sort of like slacken off a little bit. And that's because the bite, if, you, if it's going through the bite, it loses its sort of um, twist technology here rather than trap your plates. It's really, really cool, guys. That wasn't intentional. That's just what it does. So you might find that this little uh, twizzle here, you just need to tighten up every now and then. And it's got two grips in there, so I'm ready to go. It's an absolute amazing machine. It's a total workhorse, honestly. And then you put your plates totally through. There we go. So that's a little a bit of a talk through through the um, machine. Die cutting and embossing. So if you have um, embossing folders that are a little bit thicker, then use a thinner one of your thinner plates to experiment with it. I would say that once you've found something that works, um, stick with it, okay? Let's have a look. Just ask your husband for the machine for Christmas. Sarah says, can you do this machine in teal with a funky fossil logo? Uh, no. Sarah, if you're you getting told off now by Michaela, if you've got to do QQQ. <laughs> Right, so let's have some fun with some embossing folders. Is that okay? So any questions? I mean, you can PM me anyway, but for your embossing folders for my machine, you need to bear with it, okay? Get it through that first and second time. Get some muscle in your arm. Once you've done it a few times, the machine relaxes. I spoke to Simon about this, and Simon said, I thought I was going to snap my machine when I first put it through. He says, but now it goes through fine. I think your machine's just getting used to them. And a little trick for you all as well is if you um, put your embossing folder further down the plate a little bit, it just helps with the grab, okay? So let's get some crafting done. Now let's just move this to the back. So anybody who comments after I've gone off air on this video, I'm going to pick a winner for a die cutting machine. So if you have it on your list, make sure you comment. So... Let's just show you a couple of our embossing folders. Now, if you've not got any of our embossing folders, why? <laughs> why not? Um, let me just show you. Now, I have a bunch of samples here, guys. And I just want to show you some of the lovely, lovely cards that we get through from our design team in relation to our... To our... Have a quick look at some of these on here. So I'm going to do some of the techniques as well. Um, but I just want to show you when, I, you know, when we explain our... Um, embossing folders they are in my opinion they are the best in the industry they are so leading they have up to seven layers which is unheard of we do have people uh, wanting to know how the seven layers are achieved but as it stands at the moment we really really are unique in our style and design and our technology so this one is the deboss I mean look I mean that's deboss not embossed that's deboss look how beautiful that card is so um, I'm just showing you these because I just want to show you a few of the te cool techniques that you can achieve with your embossing folders. Now back to back to where we started with our embossing folders, which is watercolour in them. Absolutely beautiful. Now, if you want to check out any of the embossing folders, they're all on the website. Unfortunately, some of them are out of stock, but I wanted to show you um, some of the techniques. So if you've got a ton of embossing folders at home, Maybe you're thinking about digging them out and having a plate. Again, deboss. Now, this is the member's gift over on Create and Craft Free. You just have to pay the postage. 
This is your next member's gift. Well, there isn't another member's gift, I'm told, but we'll see what happens with that one. This is the embossed. I knew somebody had asked that question. Janice, that is a great question. And I, I wrote it down before I came to air. Does your embossing machine take the big dies? It does. Totally does, yeah. Just remove the big white one. Um, so let's keep going. Absolutely exquisite. Just going to show you a whole bunch of samples. And then I'm going to do three sort of techniques um, using the wonderful embossing folders. Question, question, when do you expect the ink pads? I've been expecting them for a while, but sometimes they take a while to clear in customs as well. So as soon as I can. And here are just the boards from our HD 3D ones, which are absolutely incredible. All of that lovely layer, texture and dimension. Can't believe you've achieved that in embossing folders. Absolutely wonderful. Question, question. Someone's asking plates when using your folders with built-in dies. Yes, instead of using your B plate, potentially use your C plate and your assistant shim. Helps with the change of camera. Uh, but play around with it. Obviously, if the machine is not afraid of a bit of bite, so if you get it there and you think, I, I don't quite push it, just give it a little bit of a push because honestly, if the pressure's too high, it will just um, loosen that little twist screw on the handle. It will sort of like give it a bit of give on the handle and then you just have to tighten it back up. It, I've never heard of a single die or embossing folder getting trapped in that machine oh, for two years. So, mind you, you're all going to be like that tonight, aren't you? <laughs> like this, <laughs> cranking it through. It got stuck. Well, what did you do? Well, I had my foot on radiator and I had my elbow on door. <laughs> Come on. Right, so let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Firstly, I want to show you some partial die cutting, okay? Yeah, die cutting, partial emboss. Now, um, somebody did a card, uh, Leanne did a card in our in our group and a lot of you said how do you do the partial emboss how do you do this how do you prevent the lines and things like that and she did a video so i thought i'd show you from leanne's video okay um it's super easy but let me tell you i didn't try it before i came to air so what i'm going to show you now is trial and error so i'm going to have to probably swap out my plates i'm going to have to do what she said so to get partial emboss you need a bit of like um board Mount board, this stuff, bit of mount board. So this is to sort of like get texture. So I'm just going to grab my plates here now. Normally, I've just said to you, we do our thick one and our white one. But because I'm putting a bit of mount board in, I'm going to get rid of my thick one and I'm going to try my thin one. Let's see what happens. Hey, give it a welly. What are we saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. You lot, let me try. That's, that's just typically you guys, isn't it? Like me with blooming elf ears. Oh, my ear didn't half hurt for days after that elf ear. I shouldn't have left it on. So I'm going by what Leanne did in her video. So you put your you put your uh, mount board wherever you want the partial emboss. So I'm just going to grab a piece of white cardstock. Let me just cut this down very quickly. This is actually a super cool technique. And to be honest with you, John Lockwood did it on TV a few months ago and do you know what i was prepping and i didn't pay attention and i should have um i saw him doing it as well so tons of people know how to do it apart from me and probably a few of you guys so we're going to learn today okay so let me just cut this down to an embossing folder size Can you believe it? it's nearly half past seven, half past eight already? What's all that about? So, at least you're going to see um, whether it works or not. So I'm just going to grab an embossing folder. So I, here I'm using the HD 3D one, which is probably one of the thickest embosses you'll ever see in your life. And this one is the Pretty Peony 
okay so you put your white card stock in i hope this works guys if it don't <laughs> um so you pop your card into your embossing folder like so as if you're going to do a, an embossed image okay and then you place your mount board wherever you want the sort of um bit to emboss and not so i think we'll go for maybe a panel down the side shall we so if i put that on the panel this is going to push this but not push this so i'll have embossed in this panel and not down here does that make sense and actually thinking about that if you had a, a heart shape in this mount board and put a heart underneath you would actually get a heart shape that's embossed and the rest wouldn't be mm -hmm. that's my way of thinking anyway probably not but we'll see so all i'm going to do is i've got my mount board i've got my embossing folder and i'm going to use my thin plate let's see if it goes through um hopefully it feels it does feel a bit thick let's try it and it's going through a little bit easy too easy so i'm gonna have to pack it out now, I did see on Leanne's that she packed hers out with a bit of card. Oh, no, it's done it. It felt too easy. So let's just show you. So now I just have partial emboss down one side of my card and not a full panel. Does that make sense if you can see there? How cool is that? It worked. So, and this... Um, this mount board guys is two mil two mil thick do you know what this mount board is it's the mount board from the back of my car to watercolor card i just ripped it off the back because i didn't have anything else so this is just off the back of our watercolor card stock love this woohoo can you do a demonstration with wax and embossing folders one day samples are amazing when i try it looks awful tracy i'm going to do one not with wax but i'll use my confetti so you'll get the wax look okay looks fabulous tony use your die cut shapes cut them with card glue them for depth and use them oh, what a great idea pam did you see did you see that message so i said a heart but pam says if you use a letter glue a few die cuts together pop pop the letter underneath run it through you're going to get an embossed partial emboss that's a cool idea isn't it that is cool like that idea didn't think it would be that easy i know it did feel like it went through a bit easy but the dimension i'll just show you the the emboss it's 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 definitely there i could have um probably i'll show you the deboss as well i could have maybe packed it out with one sheet of card and just pushed it a little bit further but totally totally happy with that the dimension is there right so let's move that to one side so that's how you do like a partial emboss now if you're doing a square one okay and uh, so just pop this sort of um this underneath the patterned area um let's just grab a square one here just show you i think it's easier so sometimes you know when we run our embossing folders through and we get the edge of our and we get the edge of our embossing folder it doesn't look quite nice it it pushes out eventually but it doesn't look quite nice does it if you put a square piece within the square so maybe a little bit smaller and run that through it stops you getting that harsh line on your cards and it's same with the five by seven so just cut your mount board to whatever size whether you want a strip a heart a rectangle a square and then you'll not get those lines as well that's it karen so question question they all asked about the emboss with a piece of card bigger than the folder and no lines so hopefully that's just helped you out there to get the no lines you just need the piece just a bit smaller than the embossing folder and it stays away from the lines so you get a nice piece so if you've just got a nice flower pop a piece underneath it'll go through and you won't get those harsh lines as well but isn't that a cool technique is that a cool technique it is right let's do some fun stuff with some ink if you have any questions though please shout me and karen are always here i mean karen works all hours god sends bless her but um me too i guess as well so if you have any questions just just shout right let's do some fun techniques so you need a bit of mount board in your stash right technique number one 
Now, I did have some order going on here. Excellent idea. Fantastic. That's answered a lot of questions. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Awesome. That's totally cool. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. Right. So let me just sort out my chaos here because I did have some order. Just thinking about what I was going to do. Let's do the black one first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this black one and I'm going to use honeycomb swirl. This one. So I felt like it would be a nice technique to do something different. So let's just move the machine for now. Let me just come back to me. So I have my um, confetti ink. So they're, they're basically the metallic -y inks that give you that sort of shine, shimmer and shine on your cards. But if you have gilding waxes, um, sparkly inks, uh, anything like that, then you've got, you, you're really good. So I'm going to go with, uh, for this one, before I put it anywhere near my embossing folder, I'm going to go a bit of tea, oh, a bit of blue. Um, go a bit of this. Shall we just do these three? I have no idea what this is going to look like, by the way, but, you know, it's all fun to play, isn't it? So I'm just going to activate these with a little bit of water. So Caroline says, the uh, question, question, is that confetti and colder you can buy? It's just a cosmetic colder, darling, from B&M. Super inexpensive. So I'm just activating these here. And I'm just going to get a little bit of a swiping technique. I'm just going to grab a brush. feel like we need to get some texture on here. So let's do a little bit of the swiping. So I'm just going to swipe down. You'll not see much at the moment, but as soon as I lift it up, I'll show you. So let's just get some colour on here to start with. Just see it there. I'm just getting rid of the sort of bland black, should you say. So a bit of gold. Can you emboss shrink plastic or would it crack? I'm not sure. So we've got that there. So let's do blue. I'll hold it up in a second. Just get some colour down here. So again, if you've got your confettis, this is another reason to get them out and play. And I will attach this video to the confetti inks as well. So let's get a bit of pink. Which is actually coming up silverish, which is fine. Got a bit of a shiny night. A nice piece of card there. Not going to put them away because I think I'm going to need them again. So let's just get rid of our lids. And let's just clean. Clean. Now I did drop my gun just one second. So has anybody got any tips for me to stay up while 1 a.m.? Chocolate, Kit Kat. <laughs> picnic so I'm just going to dry this off yeah if you missed how to get that embossed Rewind, it's at the beginning of the show, five minutes in. So it's always nice to play around with a bit of card before you pop it in your embossing folder. So let's just um, pop this in here, look. So this is the honeycomb. This is a lovely one. 
so I'm going for the raised bit on this sort of lovely woody metallic -y colour here. I'm just going to pop it in the embossing folder and then we'll shut this one. And then what we'll do at the end, I'm going to do three techniques and then at the end you can tell me which is your favourite, okay? And we'll be able to see what sort of crafters we've got going on. So I'm just going to get rid of that small plate for now. So the thick plate, so with embossing with this machine, thick plate, then your embossing folder, pull it down your um, embossing plate a little bit so it gives your machine opportunity to grab. Then just the plate on top and then when you pop it in, it should it will just go through promise you you can't hurt anything and your plates are the same size as my plates so i know and i'm confident that they will go through just do it two or three times get your machine into the habit that is pretty awesome isn't it so what we can do now just move this out of the way. Is you can bring in your confetti, which is that lovely gold. Let's just pop. And you could just pop your finger in and take some onto your finger and now just do the hat, the um the rise and falls. Because it is like a bit of a um lovely gilding wax. I'll shall hold it up in a second, okay. Confetti ink is just so versatile. We use it in so many different ways, don't we? It's absolutely wonderful. I'll hold it up in a second. I wish I'd have done a bit more of the blue on the background now because it would have looked like steel. But again, that's the beauty of embossing folders, isn't it? Playing around, messing around with some colour, getting different results. Now, you all know that we love to watercolour our embossing folders. It's what we've done for such a long time. So if you do like to watercolour your embossing folders, then of course you can still do that. But it is nice to venture out into some new techniques every now and then, you know. Try different things. So now we have a lot looks quite like a metal effect on there, doesn't it? Looks quite cool. Burnish it. Cool effect that, isn't it, guys? Sue says, where do you get your ideas from? I don't think of doing anything like that. I don't know. It's just playing, you know, guys. It really is just playing. And do I look like I sleep? <laughs> so that's one. And we'll pull them in at the end. Now, the second one I want to show you is this one. So this is going to be super cool. Now, this is a bit of a messy one. Let's leave the messy one till the very end, okay? Because that's a super fun technique. So on this one, quite simply, we're going to ink up the embossing, uh, embossing folder. And this is a really cool technique as well. So uh, pick a colour. Right, I'm going to go... Let me just grab a light colour, just one second, ladies and gentlemen. My colours are really intense and I think I want to go for a, a bit of a lighter, a bit of a lighter colour maybe. Let's grab, I'll go for light pink and dark if I can. Okay, so when you see these lovely samples here, so say for instance these ones um, from Paul, uh, I get a lot of questions about these. Now basically, you see this black on the back here? This is where the, um, the actual folder's been inked up. Now, when I ink mine up, I ink up both because I like to decide which looks the best. One always looks a mess, in other words. And then I can pick the other one. But um, you could do one side or both. So ink it up and run it through your machine. So that's what we'll do first. And then I'm going to show you how we sort of like get this look here, okay? Super, super easy. Might not look as good as Paul's, but, you know, love a trier. So let's... Um, Put some colour on here. Now I'm going to go pink. It's got pot black on um, balls, but I'm going pink. So swipe. Now you can spray with water as well if you want to. And then on the back here, just get all to the edge. 
You can even press into the embossing folder. Don't be afraid of, oh, it's going to look horrid. Um, I always, when I'm asked about Paul's cards all the time, Paul will honestly tell you that he does it once. If he doesn't like it, he puts more colour on the embossing folder and runs it back through and runs it back through and then he picks up his brush and plays around with it and paints it and faffs and all that good stuff. So there we go. So I've gone with this lighter pink. Um, now, shall we spray or shall we not? Let's spray a little bit, hey? So four sprays. One, two, three, four, OK? So I'm just going to take the card here. I'm just going to lay my card into the embossing folder. And then I'll shut. So you can see already we're going to get a beautiful, beautiful look. So let's just move that one. And let's bring in our plate. So again, our big base white and then our thickest plate. I'm going to pop it on. And then we'll, we'll run this one through. Don't forget to share. There's a machine at stakes here. If you've already got one, it'd be a great Christmas present for somebody else who maybe crafts. So let's show you what this looks like. So already, you can see that wonderful, wonderful texture and dimension. It has been sprayed. You don't have to spray it. So that's sort of the embossed. Let's turn it over. And look at the incredible deboss. Is that not just awesome? Now, like I said to you, Paul would probably now ink it back up with a bit of black and run it back through with a bit of black. Um, I don't have a black or else I would actually do that. So I'd just line it back up and then run it back through. OK, so what you can do now is you can add an accent to this, which is totally cool. Let's just move this out of the way. That is a card in itself, isn't it? It really, really is. So if you like your clean and simple, it looks like a bit of parchment work. So I'm just popping over to the other side, guys. I'm just grabbing my sticky ink pad and my lovely, whoops a daisy, that wasn't intentional, and my powder. I'm going to show you a nice little technique here. I've got my sticky ink pad there. You see me hunting. You see me hunting. So um, now another cool technique with your embossing powders is to get that like highlight of gold. If I can find my sticky ink pad, just one second. Now you're getting a tour of my lovely studio. Here it is. Cheeky, cheeky. So to get that painted look here, this one. So Paul went in with a brush and dropped some colour in there and then probably went back over with black again. Get the black in all of the recess, OK? Super easy. Super, super easy. So you can see the bones of mine coming together now. So if I painted this up and then maybe run it back through, which we could do, that would be wonderful. Now, the cool thing about this is you can do a cool technique just with this now. So if you take your sticky ink and you lightly swipe over the raised part, you get a lovely, now if you just drop it on and then, and it'll just catch the rise and fall on your design. Not everywhere, but enough just to get a bit of detail. And the beauty of it is you can't see where your ink pad's going, so you don't actually know how um, much. It's going to be covered, but take your time with it. Just swipe, swipe, swipe. And you can really achieve this with our lovely embossing folder because of that rise and fall. And then I'm going to take the gold. Now, I hope this isn't wet because it's all just going to look like a hash. So let's just grab some cardstock here just to grab the gold. Stick with it, guys. Stick with it. It is a little bit wet. Let me just give it a good old flick. You can see it's just picked up there. Now it looks a hash at the moment. Bear with. Now make sure you dry your embossing folder off. 
but it doesn't stick to all of the other places. But I'm just going to grab a dry brush just to get rid of some of that excess powder because I really don't want to ruin it because it's come out really nice. I'm just going to grab my embossing powder brush. Here we go. So if you've got your spot brushes, you get your embossing powder brush in the spot brush and this gets rid of all of that lovely, lovely, ugly, there we go, in between. I'm just going to go around. <laughs> Just going to take most of it off, guys. You're probably thinking, what are you doing, Tony? I'm taking it back off, guys, because it was stuck everywhere and it was going to ruin it. So I'm starting again. So I'm just going to dry it with my gum first. So pretend we didn't just do that part, okay? And we didn't do that part. Pretend yours is dry. So let's just get this dry first. So I'm getting this dry. Look at that deboss. So cool. So get it as dry as you can. Looks a bit mucky now, but don't worry, I'll recover it. Just picking up a brush and watercolour in this would look totally awesome. So, dry, it's dry -er. Okay, let me just grab an anti-static bag. You're probably thinking, why do you keep walking across there, Tony? Just, just bring your trolley. I'm just like, yeah. You haven't seen my what's on the floor around my feet for tonight. So, anti-static bag. So, hopefully we've saved it here. So anti-static stops all of the moisture, okay? So it doesn't stick everywhere where I don't want it to stick. So let's just move my machine for a second. So pretend we're starting again. Here we go. I'm going to take my ink pad. I'm going to pop it down. Then I'm going to lightly swipe. I sort of like change the angle of my card a little bit so it catches the rise and fall from all angles, hopefully. So base to top, top to bottom, left to right. And it should just catch the really high areas, giving us a subtle sort of gold effect, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. So let's just bring in our card. Now it's stuck even more. Let me just give it a rattle. Oh no, it hasn't. Ooh, started getting a bit of a panic there. <laughs> you see now it's all over that rise and fall. This is going to look totally awesome. Guys, let me just get rid of this. Wait till you see this. <laughs> right. Put that to one side for now. So make sure your card is dry like I just dried it off and then did the anti-static bag. But, you know, when you've done this one, if you um, want watercolour, you can totally do that. Let me just get some tissue and get rid of this embossing powder on my mat. Tony, I am the recovery queen. I know. I think Sarah says that to me quite often. You're good at recoveries. I don't know how. I don't know how. I like to see things through to the end. So I'll give it a rat a tat tat and you're absolutely happy. Let's get our gun. And let's show you on overhead as we heat set this one. Get your gun hot. Hold that back well, Tony. I know, Karen, you know me well. I'll just tilt it. Oh, I'll try and catch it. Anyway, I'll show you when it's done.
there we have a beautiful embossed image. Must be hairy doing everything live. Tracy, it can be, let me tell you. You can see, absolutely catches that light beautifully. It looks like a gilded um, sort of flower design on there. Absolutely wonderful, isn't it? What do we all think? I love that technique. But, but the cool thing about it there is Paul probably wouldn't stop there. Now, I love this, and I'm now scared, very scared, beautiful, lush. I'm very scared, wow, wow, wow. I'm very scared now to ruin it, but you can stop at this point at home, but I'm not going to stop, okay? I'm going to grab a dark ink pad now and run it back through, just to see. If it looks horrid, at least you know it looked great before I made it horrid, okay? <laughs> Let me just grab a dark ink pad, because I just feel like, you know, sometimes it really is lovely to experiment, so have the courage to... Um, to go for it if she says that i don't think i've got a dark colored ink pad they're probably in my craft bag for tv e, no no i haven't got one such a shame could i just go with the black from my own ink pad let's try it where's the embossing folder Here we go. I'm going to try it, guys. I'm going to try it with my black. So, on the... Uh, on the flat side, I'm going to try with some black. Now, just, shall we just go with the centre a bit? You're all like, jeepers, what's she doing now? I know. Can you use midnight? I could. Oh. Let's go with midnight. Good shout, Karen. So, basically, I'm just going to run my black. Gosh. Do you know what? I'm going to run my black on and then I'm going to take some off with some tissue because I'm, I'm a bit scared right now. So this is what it looks like. Ooh. I guess we'll never know unless we try. So let's try this, hey? And then I'm going to take my tissue and I'm just going to maybe soften because I'm not sure if I like the harsh lines, soften that, give it a bit of a, now, do, if you, <laughs> don't, <laughs> if I make a hash of this, ladies and gents, do not try this at home, okay, it is what it is, all right, let's line this back up then, so, embossing folder, gonna ruin it you just know i'm gonna ruin it don't i all get <laughs> denise is i'm getting very nervous just do it are you all on end of your chairs right i'm lining it back up i'm going for it all right all right calm down calm down so i've slotted it back in that's what it looks like guys um give me strength give me strength so let's do it if I ruin it, who's getting blamed? Who can we blame tonight? Who can we blame tonight? <laughs> Smoky illusion, Shaz says. <laughs> Tony, be brave. Keep going. Okay. Right, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Do you know what, though? <laughs> I might have to go back over with a dark pink to pull it back. <laughs> Let's have a look. You're all holding your breath, aren't you? Oh. What do I think? Have I ruined it? In fact, I, li I do like it, actually. <laughs> I've surprised myself. Let me know. I know I can't, I can't. We'll ring. let's blame Paul, he's not here. Great shout, Carol. We'll blame Paul, he's gone swimming. That is not a bad effort. I like it, I like it. What do we think? So that's how, so if you do use maybe a great, a grey smoky and softened it a bit more, you'd have interested. <laughs> that means it's pants. <laughs> Could have been a darker. Oh, I'm not that brave, Karen. But anyway, that was technique number two. So, so far, we have two 
totally different looks here guys elaine says she likes it thank you elaine so here actually do you know um because we've got that bit of black ink on this embossing folder you know the partial one we did i'm just going to run it through and try and lift off some of that black so i'm just going to run it back through so i'm just going to i've just slotted that piece in from what we did earlier or just just to get some of that black off my embossing folder Paul would have used more black tone. He's a bit more braver than me. So do your mop up, pick up that second. Um, well, look at all the layers in that embossing HD 3D. Incredibly proud of the technology we've put together there. And the D-Boss. Amazing right moving on so the next trick i want to show trick the next trick pull a rabbit out of a hat is with a square embossing folder now this might take a bit of time but hey ho right square piece of cardstock is everybody okay for time just very quickly i just want to show you this other cool technique pop it on the back here so don't forget to share the show and if you can pop a comment underneath here when i've gone off air so i'm going to ink this one up in black as well this is going to help me out a little bit on the flat side first of all though tony I need to get some color on here so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my ink pad let me just show you different colored ink pads Just random. Get rid of any white. So just blocks for now. Okay. Just get rid of this. I'll give it a proper clean soon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the embossing. Now I have a ton. Basically, I have done some videos for Create and Craft uh, about ten different techniques for embossing folders, which are going to be on the Create and Craft app. So you'll be able to go through all of the different um, techniques you can do because there's a stamp um, technique you can do with these, which I did uh, a ton of others. I'm just waiting for them to, um, what is the?
So hopefully you can hear me now. Sorry about that. Somebody put 50p in the meter. He's kicked me out, Nancy, I know. Kicked me out. What's all that about? Sorry about that, guys. So, do you see my note? One min. One min. Tiles back. Well done. So let's have a look at this one, what we've got going on here. There we go. Look at that. But the cool thing I like about this technique is that it's a good job I had a black pen, isn't it? Yay, you're back, I'm back. So if you take a black pen, I saw this, te this is not my idea, I saw this technique on a social media page. So if you take a black pen, to take, this is a little bit more timely, but I think it's so worth it. And if you take the black pen and colour around the design, I did the black to give me that base, but if you take the black pen and colour around, I'll just quickly do as much as I can. It really makes the leaves from that super dark colour pop. Now, this is just one of my um, lovely watercolour pens here, but you could use an alcohol marker. I have picked an easy design to go around here, but you could totally go around the outside of the peony if you wanted to. Um, let's just go around here. Can you see how it's popping? Popping, popping. Take a bit more time. Can't remember the lady's name that did this and she coloured it with like a fine liner pen, which is obviously very timely, but it did look gorgeous by the way. So I'm not a lover of these strong lines on here, to be honest. So what I'm going to do then, so let's pretend it's all coloured in black and we've taken our time um, to get our pen in there and fill in that. So it's really dark and intense in the background, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a white ink pad. And I think if we just brush over the top, it will look quite cool. Now, the lady didn't do this. This is just me playing, okay? So I'll put my ink pad on and just move it. This is just going to push back those harsh lines that I'm not a fan of at the moment. Now, if it weren't for that blooming harsh line there, I would really like this, would you? <laughs> what will I, okay? So just swipe that ink pad across the top. I'm going to get the lovely. That's better, yeah. I just don't like the harsh line. The, the intention was to pick up watercolour off my mat, but we've run out of time, so I tried to shortcut by just stamping it straight on. But if you like the geometric look, it isn't a bad look at all. And even though we've got that harsh line on there, you could totally cut this into two slimline cards if you wanted to. White, white ink is everything. <laughs> yeah, so let's have a look at our cat, the ones that we've done then. So number one, which was the sort of swiping metal technique on the back there. Then we had the risk taker where we did the ink and sprayed, then the gold embossing and then the black, run it back through again. And then this one is the multicolored background. If you just did ink blending with your big brushes all over, then the black, that you wouldn't have this harsh line. Just think about the looks you would get with that. So there we go. What do we all think? really pops so i really hope this evening studios helped you out a little bit with the in relation to your plates and the um embossing with the um the ply board underneath the the mount board underneath uh, but again if you have any questions i'm happy to do more videos i've got tons and tons and tons of techniques in relation to embossing folders they've been around for 20 or 30 years now and the tons of inspiration and technique that you can do with them is incredible um so we could do more if you needed us to do more always scan that qr code on the back of our packaging as well because that gives you that 
um, unique inspiration to that specific item also. And um, you can check out the rest of our things online. Number three, number one and number three. Really? Do you know my favourite's number two? I know. And you're all picking number one and number three. Just shows you how different we all are as crafters. It's wonderful, isn't it? So continue to share the love of craft. Now, just a little bit of an update for you. So if you have shared, brilliant. And if you pop a comment on underneath after I've gone off uh, on this video, that would also be awesome. And if you have enjoyed the show, please click that like button too on our YouTube channel. Um, just to let you all know that I am on TV on Thursday with the wonderful Poppy Collection. Most of you have probably got it anyway, but tune in for the demos. I have a ton of samples from the design team as well. So that's the one day special this Thursday to Friday, USA Saturday, shows on Monday, come home Tuesday. So five or six days, I'm going to be back and back, ready to fight fit. Bring it on bring it on. So whatever you're doing, have a lovely evening. Don't forget to comment to try and win that die cut machine. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I'll see you all later. Take care, guys. Bye.